and a very warm welcome to you. The Alabama. It was the American Civil War. British companies were legally delivering arms to both sides, the North and the South. It was very good business. But shipping had different rules. There were two kinds of ships, armed and unarmed. And British companies were allowed to deliver both armed and unarmed ships to the North, but only unarmed ships to the South. And the rules were rigorously applied and controlled. However, where there's a will, there's a way. And some people were expert at bending the rules. Put simply, most British shipping for the South left Britain unarmed. Then, as if by magic, the same ships arrived at their destinations in the South fully armed. It was all very easy. After leaving Great Britain, the unarmed ships put into foreign ports where they were armed. But of course the North didn't like this. These fully armed ships were a threat, and one in particular was a very dangerous ship, the Alabama, and she had a story. Whilst nearing completion in a Birkenhead shipyard in Great Britain, the Alabama caught the eye of the US authorities. The US authorities claimed the Alabama had been more fitted out than allowed and petitioned the British government to impound the ship. However, it was Friday, and the government was closed until Monday. But no one had reckoned with the Confederate shipping agent in Britain, a man with friends in high places, a certain Mr. James Bullock. And Mr. James Bullock got wind of events and went into action. The Alabama left port the very next day for her sea trials. On board were the mayor and mayoress of Birkenhead, members of the Birkenhead Council, and a small group of VIPs. Everyone was dressed in their best for this festive occasion. But the sea trials were shorter than expected. The Alabama soon put into Hollyhead, a port in North Wales not far from Birkenhead. There was no time to lose. The guests were hurriedly put ashore and the Alabama sped back out to sea. Then, after evading the USS Tuscara, which had been sent to intercept her, set course for mid-Atlantic. The Alabama was fitted out with heavy guns on the Azores and into war she sailed. In the course of her action-packed life, the Alabama captured and destroyed ten Union ships in mid-Atlantic. She sank the USS Hattaris in an amazingly brief 13-minute encounter, and on a round-the-world jaunt, captured 84 merchant ships. The Alabama then met her match. In a spectacular sea fight, the Alabama was defeated and sunk just off the French coast near Cherbourg, and the captain and crew were rescued by cheering spectators. But this story had an expensive end. The damages caused by the Alabama were enormous. In the end, the British had to pay more than $15 million in compensation an enormous price for weekend closing. But the Alabama was not the only British-built ship to cause damage. Maybe $15 million was not such a high price to pay. It's short-term and long-term. It's all how you see it. Shipbuilding then made very much money. The Alabama a ship built in Britain, a ship with a story.